This video covers D3 ordinal scales. The structure of this video is as follows. D3 scales revisited. D3 ordinal scales. D3 ordinal scales categorical colors. D3 ordinal scales examples and the summary. All right, let's get started. D3 scales revisited. D3 provides three types of functions that map an input domain to an output range. The quantitative scales are for real numbers. The ordinal scales are discrete domains, such as the letters of the alphabet. The time scales are an extension of the quantitative scales that use the JavaScript date objects. All of these scales take in data and convert it to a usable set of output. D3 quantitative scales are for continuous input domains, such as numbers or dates and times. The mapping is linear in that the output range y can be expressed as a linear function of the input domain x. The domain is line 1, the range is line 2. The range is thus the result of the y equals mx plus b transformation from line 1 to line 2. The leftmost element in line 1 gets transformed to the leftmost element in line 2 and the rightmost element in line 1 gets transformed to the rightmost element in line 2, and the middle elements in line 1 get transformed to the middle elements in line 2. This covers the basics of the quantitative and time scales. Next, let's cover the ordinal scale. D3 ordinal scales. D3 provides three types of functions that map an input domain to an output range. Ordinal scales have a discrete domain such as a set of names or categories. An example can be the letters of the alphabet. D3.scale.ordinal constructs a new ordinal scale with an empty domain and an empty range. The ordinal scale is invalid until an output range is specified. Until it is specified, it will always return undefined as the return value. The values passed into the domain of the d3scale ordinal function are a discrete domain. In the case of the English alphabet, it could be the 26 alphabetic letters. d3 does not assume an order. It interprets the values as you pass them in as being correctly ordered. That is, the first element in the domain will be mapped to the first element in the output range. The second domain value will be mapped to the second range value third domain value will be mapped to the third range value, and so on. The values passed in must be coercible to a string because of the way the domain values are stored internally by D3. It is possible to have D3 infer what the domain is if you do not give it a set of domain values. This is not a good idea. You should set the domain explicitly. D3.scale.ordinal.range is for a range that has discrete values. If values are specified, it sets the output range of the ordinal scale to the specified array of values. The first element in the domain will be mapped to the first element in the output range. The second domain value will be mapped to the second range value. The third domain value will be mapped to the third range value, and so on. If there are fewer elements in the range than the domain, the scale recycles values from the start of the range. The range is intended for discrete range values that match the number of domain inputs. For example, the word for the numbers in Spanish could be the domain, and the range could be the words for the numbers in English, where both are ordered in a natural order. This is a one-to-one -one relationship where we can take the input from the domain and change it to the output from the range. E3.scale.ordinal.range points is for a range that has a specified continuous interval. The interval is a two-element array representing the minimum and maximum value. The interval is then subdivided into n evenly spaced points where n is the number of unique values in the input domain. The padding can be used to apply padding to the interval at the start and end of the range. d3.scale.ordinal.range bands and d3.scale.ordinal.range round bands are for ranges that have a specified continuous interval. The interval is a two-element array representing the minimum and maximum numeric value. This interval is then subdivided into n evenly spaced intervals, where n is the number of unique values in the input domain. The padding corresponds to the amount of space in the range interval to allocate to padding between the bands. 
the outer padding is for the padding before and after the entire group of bands. Range round bands is the same as range bands with the added bonus that the band width and offset is an integer value in order to avoid anti-aliasing artifacts. Once a range band ordinal scale function has been set, range band will return the band width. This method is used in conjunction with range bands or range round bands. This can be useful to double check your work. D3 ordinal scales categorical colors. D3 comes with four types of ordinal color scales. Each scale comes with a range of HTML colors. The category 10 scale comes with a range of 10 categorical colors. The category 20 scale comes with a range of 20 categorical colors. The category 20B scale comes with a range of 20 categorical colors that are different from the category 20 colors. And the category 20C scale comes with a range of 20 categorical colors that are different from both the category 20 colors and the category 20B colors. These category colors are used very frequently for color encoding of data. Next, let's check out some ordinal scale examples as well as categorical color examples in the JavaScript console. D3 ordinal scale examples. First, let's define the ordinal scale variable we will use. As you can see, the ordinal scale is a function. Remembering that the scale is invalid until we provide an output range, let's try passing in a number and a string. Both return undefined as we would expect them to. Next, let's define a discrete domain, the letters of the English alphabet. The alphabet variable is defined as an array of 26 elements, each of which is a string of the letter of the English alphabet. Next, let's define the domain for the ordinal scale defined earlier. The domain of the ordinal scale is now 26 letters. If we pass in one of these 26 letters, it will be converted to something in the range. If we pass in the letter A, if it is a one-to-one -one pairing, then the first letter of the alphabet will be converted to the first element in the range. If it is a range points range, then it will be converted to the first of 26 evenly spaced points where 26 is the number of unique values in the input domain. If it is a range bound bands range or range band, then it will be converted to the first of 26 evenly spaced bands where 26 is the number of unique values in the input domain. Before we try different ranges, let's check to see if the function is valid yet. Both returned undefined as we would expect it to. We have not defined a range yet, so the ordinal scale is invalid until the range is defined. Let's define two possible ranges based on the numbers 1 to 26. We will try using both possible ranges to do a one-to-one -one mapping from the domain to the range in the ordinal scale. First, let's use the numbers up variable. The function is now defined. Let's test a few letters. The ordinal scale worked. It mapped the alphabet letter strings we passed into the ordinal scale function and converted them to numbers from the numbers up array. The first element A was mapped to the number 1. The second element B was mapped to the number 2. The fifth element E was mapped to the number 5. The 26th element Z was mapped to the number 26, and so on. Let's redefine the ordinal scale range to be the numbers down array. The function is now defined. Let's test a few letters. The ordinal scale worked. It mapped the alphabet letter strings we passed into the ordinal scale function and converted them to numbers from the numbers down array. The first element A was mapped to the number 26. The second element B was mapped to the number 25. The fifth element E was mapped to the number 22. The 26th element Z was mapped to the number 1, and so on. This shows that if it is a one-to-one -one mapping in the range, then the first domain element gets matched to the first range element. It does this regardless of what order you think it should be. 
this is worth paying attention to if you are passing in an ordered or unordered array as the range. Next, let's take a look at setting the range points of the ordinal scale. Here the range is defined as a continuous interval between 1 and 26. The interval will be subdivided into 26 evenly spaced points because 26 is the number of unique discrete values in the input domain. Let's test a few letters. The ordinal scale worked. The letter A was mapped to point 1, the letter B was mapped to point 2, the letter E was mapped to point 5, the letter Z was mapped to point 26. The way step size between points in the range points works is that it subtracts the minimum number from the maximum number and then divides it by the number of unique discrete values minus 1. In this case, the math is 26 minus 1 divided by 26 minus 1. So we get the step size to be 1, which is why it maps to whole integers. Next, let's take a look at setting the range bands of the ordinal scale. Here the range is defined as the continuous interval between 1 to 27. The range will be converted to 26 evenly spaced bands where 26 is the number of unique discrete values in the input domain, which explains the number 27. For points, there are 26 points between 1 and 26 inclusive, while there are 26 bands between the number 1 and number 27 inclusive. Before we test a few letters, let's check to see what the ordinal scale range band is. The range band returns the band width, which is 1. This method is used in conjunction with range bands or range round bands. Let's test a few letters. The ordinal scale worked. The letter A was mapped to point 1, the letter B was mapped to point 2, the letter E was mapped to point 5, and the letter Z was mapped to point 26. Notice that the letter Z was mapped to the point 26 and not 27. This is because the letter Z is in the band between 26 and 27, so it shows up on the 26. Finally, let's take a look at the categorical colors. This defines color as a D3 ordinal scale that has 10 categorical colors. Let's test the scale with 10 numbers to see how it works. It's done in an array so we can see all of the 10 numbers. As you can see, this generates 10 HTML colors. This is used frequently in the examples and is very handy to have around. And with that, we have explored the basics of D3 ordinal scales. Now that we have covered D3 linear scales, D3 time scales, and D3 ordinal scales, we have the necessary scale tools to start building the basic D3 charts. The summary. This video covered D3 scales revisited, D3 ordinal scales, D3 ordinal scales categorical colors, D3 ordinal scale examples, and the summary.